uh, hello guys uh, in this video we'll be talking about the fourth module about the NMR spectroscopy which is multiplicity in this case from the previous parts we know that the chemical shift tells about the type of protons in the molecule second thing is the integration of signal areas tell the relative number of protons and the third thing is the magnetic equivalent protons tell about the sets of proton or signals okay now let us talk about the multiplicity in greater detail when one nucleus is influenced by another nucleus with spin mm, quantum number which is i which is never equa uh, equals to zero uh, the two nucleus are said to be coupled both will show two lines instead of one line in each nucleus okay so here suppose this is the proton of our interest and this nearby proton is influencing uh, this uh, proton here as a result we obtain two different uh, lines instead of one the reason is that the field caused by the HX in this case can be parallel or anti parallel to the HA can experience not only the applied field but also the combination of both fields okay for example in this picture spin of HX is parallel to HA okay uh, and in on the other hand the spin of hx is anti parallel to ha in this case so here the hx spin is minus half but here the hx spin is plus half so one signal absorbs at higher field uh, if the hx is parallel and one signal absorbs at lower field if the hx is anti parallel the two lines are observed for each nucleus this is called the spin spin splitting in signal of ha in split into two peaks because uh, there is a spin spin coupling between the non equivalent protons which are ha and hx here we can see the effect on ha in the absence of hx which is uh, showing only one line no splitting observed here in the presence of hx with anti parallel spin we will have this one and this band is obtained because in the presence of hx with parallel spin due to the presence of this HX we will obtain two different lines instead of one because in the middle we are having this B0 or the magnetic field in order to obtain the signals the B0 will be adjusted to, ma to maintain the resonance conditions either lower or higher field when without HX each peak of doublet has nearly equal area in the half in the absence of HX because the population of HA in the, uh, in the two spin states are nearly equal according to the Boltzmann's distribution remember since HA and HX is split by each other the distance between two lines of both HA and HA signal is equal okay if two nucleus are only neighbors then their signals will be two lines which are diplets here this is called the n plus 1 rule the number of line splitting can be deposited by this rule multiplicity equals to 2ni plus 1 here n is the number of neighboring protons here nuclei is h1 or normal proton uh, i or magnetic spin is 1 by 2 multiplicity will be n plus 1 if, nu uh, if nucleus is 2h or deuterium then uh, it will be 2n plus 1 if it is the nucleus is uh, 3 by 2 or it is uh, showing the spin 3 by 2 then the multi multiplicity will be cn plus 1 since the spin quantum number which is i of h1 is half therefore the multiplicity is 2n plus 1 in this case again so the rule 2n plus 1 stands for consider this is the example now here this hydrogen is bound to that and again here no never gives a singlet in this case so no never is present uh, for this this uh, hydrogen or this type of chemical equivalent so again never go with uh, the number of protons in this case remember always try to go with the type of proton environment that are present for example in this picture though there are two different protons but the chemical environment for the protons are same so it is giving us only one set of proton in this case we are having two different uh, environment of protons so two different set of protons again in this case two different set of protons okay so now let's begin here so if we look at here only one set of protons and no neighboring proton is influencing their splitting so it gives only a singlet okay so area is 2 n plus 1 so if it's a singlet area will be 1 plus 1 2 here we are having one neighbor so this is if this is our proton of interest this is the neighbor so it will give us splitting so it will be 1 plus 1 area will be 2 
here again if we are having uh, two neighbors in this case for example so this is our, our proton of our interest and these are the two neighboring protons which will influence this proton for splitting so 2 plus 1 it will be 3 in this case here again uh, if this is the hydrogen of our interest so these are the another six protons though there are six different protons but uh, they are influencing the splitting of this proton so they ultimately n plus 1 rule will have a s 7 7 means odd, odd means the area will be 1 and if you have an even number the area will be 2 right so again in this case we can see here uh, so here th if this is the proton if this 6 proton are our consideration this is a 1 proton so 1 proton is neighboring so it can give influence this uh, all the different set of protons which are this blue color so again in all the pictures we are having only two different types of environments remember so again in this case if we consider the effect of this red proton onto this blue colored proton environment then the th this will be the doublet because the rule will be n plus 1 which is 2 here area will be 6 now splitting patterns of for a proton with 0 1 2 and 3 equivalent neighboring protons we can see here if we have a structure like this HA only one structure no neighboring proton the, the, the peak will be a singlet for only the HA and if we have a structure HA and HX two different chemical equivalents so one neighbor so n plus one structure will be two it will be a doublet if we are having uh, if we are looking at this HA and two neighboring protons are there so the n plus one rule suggests us that there will be three uh, uh, splitting of three so it will be a triplet in the fourth uh, picture we are having uh, three different proton neighboring protons which will act on HA and uh, it will give rise to the formation of three plus one four so the signal of HA will be four or quadrate okay peak areas in any multi uh, multiplate uh, can be de derived from the Pascal's triangle as you can see if you look at the Pascal's triangle we can form this from 1 1 is to 1 then 1 is to 2 is to 1 then 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 and all this way it can go like 1 3 plus, three plus 1 is 4 then 3 plus 3 is 6 then 3 plus 1 is 4 again so this is uh, the way is it will move on so let us move here this is the singlet sorry this is the singlet then we are having one is to one which is a doublet here then if we uh, combine the doublet we will have a triplet here then we combine triplet we will have a quartet here then we are having a uh, quintet here then we have a hex uh, sexet and then we have a septet okay so this is the arrangement utilizing the pascal's triangle rule okay so we have seen the multiplicity rule and the importance of multiplicity now let us look at the coupling constants the signal splitting of a proton NMR spectra is usually small ranging from fractions of hertz to as much as 18 hertz and is designated as J referred to the coupling constant now the coupling constant J J is the distance between the peaks in the splitting signal the magnitude of J is dependent only on the field that are caused by magnetic uh, atoms within a molecule but independent of the external field strength which is B0 the most common pattern that uh, have been seen are doublet and triplet in most of the cases in case of doublet we are having n equals 1 in case of triplet we are having n equals 2 and J or the coupling constant refers to the distance between these peaks now in uh, low resolution NMR spectrum we generally not find uh, cannot find this kind of splitting but if we look at the higher resolution NMR spectra we can find this splitting which will uh, eventually help us to resolve much more detail about the molecular structure first order and the second order spectra spectra that can be inter interpreted by using n plus 1 rule are said to be first order spectra in the first order spectra the difference in chemical shifts which is in hertz between two groups of protons is large when dn by j is large and we see first order splitting the system is said to be weakly coupled for example here the weak coupling is observed which is a first order in some spectra using n plus 1 rule is not enough therefore such advanced analysis may be required for interpreting the spectra these spectra are said to be second order spectra in the second order spectra the difference in chemical shifts between two groups of protons is similar in the magnitude to the J 
when dn by j is large and we see second order splitting in this picture the system is said to be strongly coupled right example of first order spectra the ethyl acetate spectrum displayed the typical quartet and triplet of the substitute ethyl group as you can see here so this is the triplet and this is the quartet the spectrum of 1,3-dichloropropane uh, demonstrate the triplet and quintet. So we are having both of them, triplet and quintet here. Example of second order spectra. If a given nucleus is spin coupled to two or more sets of neighboring nuclei by different J values, the n plus 1 rule does not predict the entire splitting pattern. The spectra may be complicated due to the strong coupling as you can see here. So no coupled hydrogen, only one, which is the singlet. One coupled hydrogen, it will be n plus one, a doublet. Two coupled hydrogen, it will be two plus one, triplet. And a double uh, doublet or du whatever. And three coupled hydrogens, it will be uh, a doublet of doublet of doublets. Okay, so you can find. So this kind of spectra is not a single uh, first order spectra that you can find. In case of first order spectra, we can see the singlet, doublet, quad, quartet and all these things but in case of this second order spectra what you can find no coupling that means a singlet one coupling a doublet two coupling must be two two doublets that means a doublet is for the uh, split to uh, two doublets again three coupled means uh, a doublet is uh, split it to a doublet and those doublet will further split it to doublets so this is uh, the way the second order spectra will look like and will move on okay so we have seen in this case anyways last let's move on let's move on the last part which is the type of spin spin coupling spin spin coupling the way in which the spin of one nucleus influences the spin of another now this is the Dirac vector model. The electrons in the inter intervening bonds between the two nuclei transfer spin information from one to another by means of interaction between the nuclear and electronic spin. The spin of nucleus and electron paired we can see here which is a lower energy and here the spin of nucleus and electron parallel which is a higher energy. If they are in anti-parallel lower energy, parallel in higher energy. An electron near the nucleus is assumed to have the lowest energy of interaction with the nucleus when the spin of electron has its spin direction prepared to that of the nucleus. Types of spin-spin coupling. We can find it will be one bond coupling, it can be two bond coupling, it could be three bond coupling, or it could be long range coupling. If we look for a uh, one bond coupling, now in case of one bond coupling, coupling via one bond occurs when a single bond links two spin active nuclei for a C13 hydrogen bond and uh, other type of bonds where both nuclei have spin. Okay. Note here in this case, when two spin nuclei are anti-parallel in nature, here you can see the J is usually positive. When two spin nuclei are parallel in nature, the J normally negative. So here these are the anti-parallel, so J will be positive in this case. Okay, let's move on. Two bond coupling. The two bond couplings or germinal coupling, as you can see here, the amount of germinal coupling depends on the HCH angle. It can also depend on the hybridization and also the substituent effect in this case. And this is the angle at which uh, the coupling is actually occurring. So the angle is called A. Uh, the germinal coupling constants increase as the decrease due to the two or orbital move closer and the electron spin correlation become greater. Hybridization is important and act and can affect the germinal coupling normally uh, as you can see in this case. Okay. So I'm not going to ta tell about the details of all these packages. Okay. So in this way we can find uh, the three bond coupling and also we can find the long range coupling which is more than three J's. Okay. So you can see in this cases. Okay. This is uh, in much more detail. You don't need to memorize uh, that much for biological purposes. And I hope uh, you can understand the basic uh, level of splitting. Okay. That's it. And I hope this will help you.